So, who is going to win the Champions Cup? A very simple question for you to start this video. Following the last 16, we are heading into the quarterfinal weekend and we now have eight teams remaining. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Alfie and in this video, I thought I'd do a little bit of a look back on the last 16, a little bit of a preview towards the quarterfinals, although I'll do a more in-depth one as we get towards the end of the week, and just a general chat about the Champions Cup, starting off with that very question. Where you can answer that question is in the comment section down below. Do let me know, and also feel free to drop your thoughts on any of the different teams or any of the various different things that I get through in this video. There's a couple of different bases that I want to cover, as well as commenting, like the video, subscribe to the channel, the stuff that I ask you to do at the start of every video. It's massively, massively appreciated, but let's get into it. So as I say, then there were eight. We've got Bordeaux against Harlequins, Leinster against La Rochelle, Northampton against the Bulls, and Toulouse against Exeter. Uh, and just in terms of how the tournament's shaping up, I'll put it up on screen here, but Toulouse and Exeter, the winner of that, faces Bordeaux or Quinns. On the other side, Leinster, La Rochelle, and then Northampton and the Bulls. So who is going to win it? I'll get onto that or attempt to try and answer it by the end of the video. Another question though, looking at that kind of tree of how it can all pan out and looking at the four quarterfinals we have, is there enough jeopardy in those matches? In that Bordeaux, I think, will be heavy favourites at home to beat Harlequins. Northampton, I think, at home against the Bulls will be heavy favourites, not so much because of a disparity in the quality of the two teams, but because the Bulls are having on short notice to travel up from South Africa. They're having to do similar, you might remember, to what the Stormers had to do when they played Exeter at the same stage of the competition last year, where you have to take multiple flights. You don't arrive until midway through this week. You can barely train. You're jet lagged. It is so difficult for those sides to be able to do that. And that is an issue more widely with this competition at the moment. And then also you would say to lose, there'll be heavy favourites to play Exeter. So it's only really that Leinster La Rochelle game that I think a lot of people will look at and feel, oh, that could really go either way. That is going to be fiercely competitive. Now, upsets happen. Any of you who are regular viewers on this channel will be quick to remind me that I completely wrote off England ahead of them playing Ireland in the Six Nations. Upsets happen in sport. It's why we love it. But generally speaking, is there enough jeopardy? Is there enough competition in those quarterfinals? Let's hope we still have some really great games. You, we also have the potential to see some quite one-sided ones as it is. But let's get into some of the individual matchups. Bordeaux against Harlequins. This should be fun. <laughs> on paper, this should be a little bit bonkers with two teams that when they get through their attacking phases of play, when they go through the attacking gears are absolutely blockbuster. But with Bordeaux, are they genuine title contenders? So in part answering the question I pose in the title of the video, who's going to win the Champions Cup? I think most people at the moment, this is how I feel, would have Leinster and Toulouse as the two favourites, in particular because they've got the home games coming up. You've then got La Rochelle, the two times champions, who haven't looked amazing in the competition this year, but have found a way. They went away 16-0 down against the Stormers and were able to win at the weekend. For me, I would have those three teams with Leinster and Toulouse probably joint on top, La Rochelle, and then I'd have Bordeaux. Because they've, they've been so good in this competition this year covered a few of their games and they have ripped teams apart. They are scarily good in that attacking back line. They're great entertainment, which is why I think it could, if Harlequins can turn up, be a really entertaining game in, in that match and that quarterfinal coming up this weekend. But how serious do you give Bordeaux a chance of actually winning the Champions Cup? I suppose another way to look at it, going back to how the draw works out, Presuming, as I think most of us would, that Bordeaux and Toulouse both win this weekend, does it come down to Bordeaux? Are they able to they go and beat Toulouse and put themselves into a final? But I've been really excited. I've really enjoyed watching them play this year. Just on the back of the last 16 as well, by the way, with Saracens and the way that once again they went to Bordeaux, got completely and utterly taken to the cleaners. Bordeaux, comfortable and deserved winners. Is it the end of Saracens' 
ability to compete with the best teams in Europe. You could actually argue that that's happened already. This is, this is not the first time we've seen them be beaten quite comfortably in this competition. It's happened a few times over the last few years. But I look at it particularly with Owen Farrell departing, the fact that Mark McCall has spoken about this squad and the fact that they're going to have to try and regenerate it. The Vinopola boys are expected to depart. There's been a changing of the guard. I just wonder whether the Saracens teams of old that were so sensational that won multiple Champions Cups, whether that era is fully ended. They are not able to compete with the very best teams in this competition at this moment in time. We could well be saying the same about Northampton, Quinns and Exeter as well by the end of the quarterfinals because of salary caps, size of squads, all that sort of stuff. It is a lot harder, I think, for the English teams to do. Let's get on to Leinster-La Rochelle. What more is there to say about this game other than the fact that we should appreciate that I think we are watching one of the great Champions Cup, Heineken Cup rivalries. They've met in the, pre -two, the two previous finals. They've met in the pool stages of this competition and Leinster went away from home and won in France. They have had a number of brilliant matches over the years and we get another one this weekend. And as I say, I would have Leinster favourites. I'm interested to hear from some of the Ireland fans, the Leinster fans in the comments section, because a lot of what I saw from the reaction from the Leicester game and beating Leicester at the weekend was Leinster have to be way better. They have to play better than that. I thought Leicester actually did a pretty good job themselves of competing when they had quite a depleted squad against the quality of Leinster. But is there an onus on Leinster that they need to improve? Because this La Rochelle team, as I say, I don't think they have looked as impressive as previous years, but they seem to be able to just find a way. They have often done it the hard way, winning away in Dublin in the final last year, various other scalps that they have had. So you can't write La Rochelle off. Yeah, I would give the edge to Leinster though, personally. So Northampton and the Bulls, this is a fascinating one because of what I spoke about earlier, the Bulls and their travel and just the various logistics that this tournament throws up, I think makes Northampton heavy favourites. They might have been the favourites anyway, playing at home. And this is an issue for the competition. And I don't really know what the solution is. Like There's almost nothing. There's always going to be certain problems with the Champions Cup, having, a nor having it in the North and in the Southern Hemisphere on how you logistically work that. And it's such a tough question because you remove those kind of travel issues and all that sort of thing. And this game at the weekend, I think, will be absolutely blockbuster. And it might well still be, but I just think there are issues that are arising because of it. And that got me thinking. And it almost got me thinking more about where the Champions Cup sits amongst South African fans, their viewpoint on it. I might even do a, a sole video on this. I think it's probably worth it and would might be quite an interesting conversation. So South African fans let me know how much do you care about the Champions Cup? I don't mean that disparagingly. I'm genuinely interested because I saw it a bit over the weekend. There were some conversations about it. I think the attendance at the Stormers was pretty decent. I think the attendance at the Bulls, I saw someone said to me that actually it was pretty good, but because the cameras are on that side of the ground, you're looking at the other side of the ground and it looks really empty. But there are wider conversations about how much the Champions Cup is gripping, I think, the rugby public in South Africa as well, and what the solution is for that. The one thing I could suggest is, this might be a bit unpopular, does the Champions Cup need a South African team to win it in order for them to ha feel like they have more of a history in it? I often felt like as soon as the South African teams entered the URC and the way that the Stormers won that first URC that they were a part of, really engaged the fan base more. And I wonder whether that would help if that were to happen with the Champions Cup and the South African teams. Just an idea, but let me know. Final game, Toulouse-Exeter. I think Toulouse have arguably been the most impressive team in the Champions Cup so far this year. I think a lot of people would have them as favourites. They've got Untermach back at fly half to Pont there, pulling the strings again at scrum half after his hi hiatus or a brief hiatus, which we'll return to ahead of the Olympics with the Sevens team. It's a tall order for Exeter. I thought they did really well. I know they were the, at home, but in tough conditions against Bath at the weekend, they are a young team. What an opportunity and what a challenge for that Exeter side. But that, 
That is a brutally tough test. So we will see how it goes. How close do you think those games will be? I hope, and I think there is a chance, they'll be closer than perhaps I've teed up with questioning how much jeopardy there is in them. But I hope we get a really good weekend. And in answer to the question, who's going to win the Champions Cup right now? I would go with Toulouse. But as I've hinted at already, I think there are maybe three or four teams that have the capabilities of doing that. I don't think it includes any of the English clubs, unfortunately. I think the Bulls, in terms of their quality, are good enough to. I just... I worry that the logistics and the travel and all that sort of thing might hamper them in their pursuit of doing that. But we shall wait and see. I will leave it there now for this video. As I say, sort of thinking off the top of my head, the whole how much do South African fans care about the Champions Cup? What's the relationship amongst the fan base and the Champions Cup in South Africa might be a, a video in its own right. So let me know in the comment section if you have a view on that, especially if you are South Africa based. I'll leave it there. Who's going to win the Champions Cup? Is there enough jeopardy in the quarterfinal lineup we have? I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Watch him.